If you're thinking about building your first set of speakers, or maybe you've already started and hit a few bumps in the road, well, this video is here to help you. Today, I'm going to dive into the five biggest mistakes I see first time DIY speaker builders commonly make. And crucially, the specific steps you need to take to avoid them. These aren't small slip ups, these are the kind of mistakes that can turn a promising project into a pile of MDF scraps and regret. But don't worry, we have all been there. And the good news is every one of these can be avoided with just a little bit of planning and a little bit of know-how. Now, whether you're aiming for a killer set of bookshelf speakers or floor shaking tower system, these tips will save you time, money, and a whole lot of frustration. So grab a drink, grab your notepad, and maybe even that unopened driver box you've been staring at, and let's get into it. Mistake number one, poor planning. Many beginners dive headfirst without thoroughly researching their components or even their design. How to fix this is pretty easy. First, you need to start by clearly defining your goals. What type of sound do you want? Do you want it bright? Do you want it neutral, bass heavy? Also consider what size speaker you're aiming for. Are you building a, a compact bookshelf speaker or a large tower speaker? Those decisions will impact what kind of drivers you choose and how much internal volume your cabinet will need. Next, choose drivers compatible with each other and your intended enclosure. Now, if you're unsure of how to do that, don't worry. I created a video and you can check it out right here. In addition, use proven online calculators and design software like WinISD or Basebox Pro to simulate your enclosure's performance. Spend time sketching detailed diagrams. Maybe use programs like SketchUp and make comprehensive parts lists before you even begin buying anything. Mistake number two, I see a lot. Ignoring cabinet bracing and damping. Many underestimate how crucial the internal structure and damping materials are for clean, clear sound. Now to fix this, you need to strategically place internal bracing inside your cabinet to stiffen those large panels, breaking them into smaller, non-resonant sections. One commonly overlooked step though, is adding vertical braces. Many builders focus only on horizontal bracing and forget that the tall side panels can flex just as much, if not more. Vertical bracing between the top and bottom panels and side to side braces on tall enclosures can make a huge difference in reducing panel resonance. Typically, you should place your horizontal and vertical braces about every 8 to 12 inches to dramatically reduce those vibrations. Next, you need to line your enclosure's internal surfaces with acoustic foam, felt, or polyfill insulation to absorb internal reflections and standing waves. The thickness of the damping material really matters. A thin layer may help with minor reflections, but for the deeper absorption, especially with larger enclosures, consider using one or maybe even two inch material thickness wherever space allows. The thicker material are especially useful on the rear and side walls to tame back wave reflections from the woofer. Doing both of these, bracing and damping, dramatically enhances clarity and reduces distortion. Mistake number three, poor or no frequency response measurements. Many beginners either skip measurements entirely or take inaccurate measurements, causing significant issues in their crossover design. Here's how to avoid it. Always measure your driver's frequency responses individually before designing your crossover. Use accurate measurement equipment such as a calibrated microphone paired with a reliable software like a Room EQ Wizard or Roo, or of course, my favorite, the OmniMic software. Remember, do not rely on manufacturer provided graphs alone as driver performance can significantly change once you place that in your cabinet design. Additionally, make sure not to move your microphone or speaker during measurements to ensure consistency. Now steer clear of generic pre-made crossovers as they rarely match your specific driver characteristics. Instead, carefully measure your drivers in the actual cabinet, then design your crossover based on that precise, real world data to ensure balanced and clear audio performance. Mistake number four, incorrect driver placement. Poorly placed drivers can significantly degrade sound quality, causing uh, phase issues and uneven frequency response. Fixing this requires carefully planning your layout based on acoustic principles. Typically, drivers should be vertically aligned to ensure cohesive sound. The mid-range and tweeter in particular should be kept as close together as possible 
to reduce lobing and ensure a smooth transition in frequency. The tweeter should ideally be placed at ear level, which may affect your overall layout. And this is especially important in seated listening environments. Do not place drivers purely for aesthetics. Every placement decision should have a clear acoustic reason behind it. For example, placing the woofer lower helps minimize floor bounce issues, while bringing the tweeter in mid close helps imaging and integration. Here's something that catches a lot of builders off guard. Offsetting drivers can sometimes help reduce baffle diffraction, but only if done intentionally and with supporting measurements. It's not something you should do just because it looks cool. And if you want more information on that, check out this video. And as always, don't forget to think in 3D. Always follow recommended spacing and alignment guidelines provided by your driver manufacturer or trusted design reference. In other words, don't change the driver placement of a trusted design. Mistake number five, not verifying your final results. Building the speaker is only part of the journey. Many beginners stop once the cabinet is assembled and the crossover is installed without confirming that it's actually performing the way it was designed to. To fix this, always measure final speaker system after assembly. Compare the actual frequency response and impedance measurements to your simulation data. Ask yourself, does it match the expected curve? Are there any anomalies or unexpected peaks or dips? Use software like Roo or OmniMic to test the response. Also, use a tool like DATS to measure the actual impedance curve and verify port tuning. This can help confirm your enclosure's tuning frequency and identify any resonance or mismatch that needs correction. Double check the crossover alignment, make sure the drivers are in phase. Verifying those final results helps you catch and fix problems before you finalize it. Here's the best part. Once you know these pitfalls, you start to see speaker designs differently. It's no longer just boxes and drivers, it becomes a craft where every measurement, cut, and connection shapes how your music will sound. These aren't just mistakes, they're the same challenges every experienced builder has faced. But now, you're ahead of the curve. Remember, a well thought out approach, careful execution, and patience are key to achieving professional quality audio results. If this video helped you out, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your own DIY tips or challenges in the comments below. And don't forget to join me live Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time to learn more about DIY speaker building and get your questions answered live. There you have it, five major mistakes that new DIY speaker builders make with detailed practical steps to avoid each one.